I don't think I've ever actually told anybody this, but that was the first time I ever kissed a guy. Hey, a really quick shout out to my boy Dennis, whose name I thought was Denise. But uh, Dennis, thank you. I said I would give you a shout out on the first podcast. I thought that'd be an interesting start to the first episode of uh, Brutally Honest, but honestly, there's nobody sitting in this f***ing chair. I'm in here by myself talking to myself, but we are going to get on the phone with my buddy. This is the very first shitty, terrible, bad f***ing episode of Brutally Honest. Um, honestly, right off the bat, it took a while to set all of this up. We've got... One, two, three different cameras. We've got to set over here for the guests in the future. This podcast is basically going to be about the news, interviews, um, fiction, nonfiction. I don't know. I'm not doing any fucking storytelling here. But we'll kind of make it as we go. And this is going to be like the rough set. I already want to switch a lot of stuff up. I may end up putting this in a totally different room of my house because honestly, right over there, I have a VR treadmill. I've got my entire streaming studio. I've got a giant green screen over there. And I'm thinking this room is a little crowded and it really limits the podcast. So we may end up switching the podcast to a totally different spot uh, in the near future. But I would love it if you guys ate me up in the comments. Please tell me everything that you absolutely hate about this episode. Is the audio bad? Are the camera angles bad? Is the lighting bad? Which it is. But I really want you guys to kind of talk uh, amongst yourselves in the comments and let me know what you absolutely hate. Things you want to see here. Um, I already know I need stuff all here the desk is dude this shit is like dirty bro the reason i want you guys to go so hard in the comments too is because uh it's taking forever for me to get this one episode out we haven't even put anything out we're at twenty thousand subscribers which i greatly 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 appreciate and i've realized we've always just like sent it from the very beginning if you guys have ever watched my content you know we start from like the very bottom and everything gets better and better in the setup that's what i think is going to really be nice uh just kind of Starting from scratch on the podcast, it's shit, but I'd love to see where we're at in one year. I really do think we can go the distance with this podcast, and I think it will end up being uh, really interesting in the future. The goal is to do one episode a month here on uh, Brutally Honest, and we're going to try putting them up on Thursdays amongst, you know, Apple, Spotify, YouTube. And let me know down below in the comments on other platforms you guys want me to put this stuff out on, because I honestly don't know. Uh, this is a totally new venture that I'm trying out, and I really want to go hard in the paint. Siri, shut the fuck up. God damn it. This is going to be like a super short episode. Um, so we're going to talk about how the Navy SEALs are involved with this hazing investigation and how they're being too cruel and some people are going to get in trouble and yada, yada, yada. There's not too much out on it, but I saw this a few days ago and I knew immediately. This is the first thing we're going to review. Um, we're going to talk to my buddy Jake, who's a Navy SEAL, uh, and what his thoughts are from someone who's actually been inside of the teams. I'm letting everybody know now I'm not a Navy SEAL because for some reason it always comes up that I was like an Air Force PJ, I was a Navy SEAL, I was a Delta Force operator, I was Army Ranger. I'm like, no, never, never came out of my mouth, so I'm just going to squash that right now. I am not a Navy SEAL, uh, but we are going to get insight from someone who was a Navy SEAL. This is my friend Jake, guys. He's on the phone right now. Uh, I don't know if you want to tell, tell the people about yourself really quick before we kind of dive into this shit, dude. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I was at the teams for about 10 years, uh, still team three, did three deployments with them, and then finished out as a buzz instructor for the last two years I was in. So got out in 2016. Okay, dope. What would you do while you were uh, in the teams? Uh, I was a point man and a sniper. So Hot. And yeah, then, those are my, my two main things. And then uh, for those of you who might be curious how me and Jake met, um, we kind of got involved in the uh, – EP industry, uh, for those of you who don't know what EP is, is the executive protection industry and trying to figure out what executive protection is. The best way I can just, easy, easy to finish, def, definition, I guess, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jake, from your end, is just a handsomely paid bodyguard for billionaires. If we, if we wanted to just dive it down, people who are actually trained in the world of security. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I saw on the news about all the hazing shit, and immediately I was like, dude, I got I to gotta send this video to Jake. And I called you earlier today. I was like, hey, bro, we're, we're doing a podcast today. I, I need to do this with you because um, you're someone who actually has insight from inside the teams. And I kind of want to play uh, some clips for uh, the people who are watching and listening um, so they can kind of get a gist of what we're going to be breaking down. SEAL recruits blanketed with a cloud of tear gas while being ordered to sing happy birthday so they can't hold their breath. The reason this is called Brutally Honest is because uh, it, it just fucking is what it is. I'm not going to play any games. And it's an opinion at the end of the day. That's why I can be as brutally honest as I fucking want, and so can you. 
As somebody who's been a Navy SEAL and been in the teams, uh, what do you think when you see the fact that Navy SEALs are now under investigation for hazing, singing happy birthday while being uh, basically just taking some OC? Dude, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's buds. It's six months of, of hazing 24-7. That's what it is. <laughs> like, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's ridiculous. I mean, they signed up for this. They know they're going through pure hell for six months of their lives. And if they make it through, it's like, what, less than 1%? Yeah. Make it through. Uh, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's as soon as you wake up, if, if you even get to go to sleep, you're, you're getting hazed from, you know, 5 a.m. till 3 a.m. at night. It's like, they just, it's just kind of crazy how, like, this stuff is supposed to be the hardest thing anyone could go through. And, you know, when I, I was a buzz instructor for two years and yep. I feel, I feel bad for these buzz instructors. You know, it's like the PC culture is like leaking into Naval special warfare. It's just total nonsense. Like yeah. when, when I was an instructor, it would, they were changing like twice a month, you know, when it was really bad, like what we could do, what we couldn't do, what we could say, what we couldn't say. It's like, Wow, there was a point there where we, say. Yeah, like we weren't allowed to call them anything other than their name. You know, we weren't like supposed to demoralize them. But it's like, wow, you know, the coldest I ever, yeah, the coldest I ever been wasn't in buds. The most demoralized I've ever been wasn't in buds. It was in Afghanistan. And like, if we're gonna make this training easier on them, not only is it not beneficial for them, because you know, going through the hardest thing that you can make it, you know, I'm all about like safety and, you know, following what's right. Yeah. And obviously these, you know, I haven't heard of anyone ever, you know, having any kind of medical problems from the CS gas before. It was kind of one of those things, you know, that was like, uh, when you, you know, you showed up brand new to buds from boot camp, you know, you got these guys there and like, you know, later on down the pipeline in third phase or whatever. And they're like, all the rumors are true and you're like, what are they talking about? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we, we knew that that's kind of like the final, you know, rite of passage, you know, like these guys have made it through almost, you know, 90% of buds. And unless they really fuck something up, they're, they're going to be a seal, you know, here pretty soon. So there's always yeah. a, that rumor when you get to the, you know, San Clemente where, you know, there's going to be, you, you know, we're going to get gassed at some point. And I remember, when we were doing it, the instructors were like, they were being like way too nice. And they were like, just follow us, just follow us for a little bit. And we kind of walked up a hill <laughs> and we're like, what, well, you know, what the hell's going on? And uh, then they, they, they put on their gas masks and we're like, oh shit, here it, it comes. begins. Yeah. Oh, but shit. Uh, I, I think this video, that it looks a little brutal, honestly. I think it was just bad. Oh. A bad situation. Like, I think the wind was just right because. Yeah. When, when we did it, it was like they had their, their you know, CS gas grenades and they had their gas masks on and they kind of walked around us in a circle. Yeah. And this video kind of shows them like you can't even see them at, at some no, point. No, they, the you instructors know, aren't stupid. Like, they definitely use the wind. They they use it yeah. accordingly. Right, right. Of course, they're going to be upwind from it. But like, I think, you know, these guys definitely got the literal shit end of the stick on this <laughs> one because... <laughs> Because, I mean, they were just, it was just like a blanket, you know. Obviously, it sucked, and I saw that one guy passed out. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I wish I would have passed out. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I wish yeah, I would have passed out. Oh, so, yeah, he got the easy <laughs> yeah. end of the stick, dude. Yeah. If you really yeah, think I mean, about it's it. Not, yeah, I mean, everyone's fine afterwards. It doesn't last that long. And like I said, like, the rules are changing, like, constantly for these buds instructors. I feel bad for them, like. It's it's almost just hard to keep up with it. I mean, maybe they did mess up and go a little too long, but I mean, obviously they're not trying to hurt anyone. It's just something that every single class goes through. At some point, you know, like you said, they got this shit under the stick, and it does look a little brutal. But correct me if I'm wrong. It'd be imp it would be false to say that every single class is going to get something that's harder at some point in time throughout the six month period of getting your shit pushed in. It's going to be worse than another class. Some point at some point oh, in time, I'm these instructors are going to get you. You're going to get got. Oh yeah. You're going to get, you're going to get got more than once for sure. 
Yeah. And I mean, it's like you got summer classes that go to the winter at the end, or they start at the winter at the beginning, and then it's summer at the end. So it's like, you know, you pick and choose. You want it to be, you know, at the, at the beginning when you're like, you know, doing surf torture, which I guess is called surf conditioning now, because you're not allowed to say surf torture. You're not allowed to say torture. Because it's bad now. Which, yeah, which is whatever. But like, torturing's bad. People, I know this. Don't, don't, don't get on me. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's another so, thing you said, man, that's actually, I, I really don't want to pass it up. But you said, you know, yeah, it's demoralizing. Um, and one of the most demoralizing moments of your life wasn't in Buds. It was in Afghanistan. Um, exactly. And yeah. I would love if you could take a second to hit on that because I don't think people understand that this is part of the process. There is a, a training aspect of this, you know. We can only simulate war so much and get you so close without you actually being there. And if you can't cut it even in the training, you're not even going to be able to possibly function and or think, act, and save your life and or your brothers and sisters around you downrange if you can't handle a simple training scenario. Yeah, 100%. And like, and stuff like that, you know, I, I guess this was all brought up because one of the students had died. And I yeah. don't really know much about that, which I'll have to kind of go into. I'll have to look that up. But uh, we had yeah. a student. I'll, I'll talk more about what you asked, but I'll, I got to bring this up real quick. Yeah, we had it, a student it. when I was an instructor. Uh, we were doing pool skills. And, you know, in the pool, anytime we have students in the pool, we got, you know, three or four instructors with a mask and fins, you know, in their case, in case a student passes out because, you know, they're, they're treading water, holding the brick. Yeah. You know, all these things all these, you know, evolutions to get them comfortable in the water. You know, if you're not comfortable in the water, you're not going to be a seal. So, yeah. And, uh, it wasn't, wasn't uncommon for, for kids to, to pass out. You know, we'd be right there. We'd bring them to the side and, you know, they'd be fine. They, they just like hyperventilate and hold the breath and they just go unconscious. That wasn't too uncommon. I saw that happen quite a bit, but, uh, we had a student, you know, I, I think it was during the brick tread, something happened. He, he passed out. They brought him to the side. He was totally fine. He was alert, talking to everybody. Okay. And then I guess he had a, a heart attack. Oh shit. Uh, later on, I, I think it was like within an hour, and uh -huh. that there was a whole another investigation on that. Like, were we not doing something right? This and that. But turned out he heart had attack. like a previous heart heart condition that yeah. he had lied about to get into the military. So I don't know if this yeah. kid had a, another condition that maybe you know he he already had or or what, but. There's stuff like that too, and I think you know these instructors get the the raw end of the deal, like thinking you know they get investigated like they did something wrong when really it's just it's buds. It's supposed to be the hardest thing in the world, you know. Yeah, I mean at the end of the day too, you guys have a curriculum that you're given or handed down. Like you know, I understand, uh, and correct me if, if I'm wrong, but as someone who was an instructor, you're given like you know you create the schedule, but you're also given down you know what needs to be met, the criteria in order for someone to pass buds, right? exactly yeah we got all the times for like all the runs swims and the obstacle course and things i can do and like you know all, all these different different things you know shooting you know shoot ahead in certain amount of seconds you know all, tons of things you know, different tests you have to pass on explosives and there's a lot you got to go through so what um that kid who had the the heart attack did he end up dying or did they make it I believe he did die, and that's why it was such oh, a big deal. Oh, wow. So he did die, buds. Yeah. Wow. How, how was that for you mm -hmm. as an instructor? Is, did you have a connection with that student at all, or was it just like, fuck, man? Like, like, like uh, in war, it's one thing, right? Like, you, I've had buddies where it's like, okay, we're here, and they're gone. Fuck, I love you. I miss you. It's not time to cry right now. We move on. Right. Yeah, it was, it was rough, man. Like, they did a a big investigation. I, th I think the parents even pressed charges and a couple of the instructors were, were kind of just like on hold, like weren't allowed to do anything for like, I think it lasted almost a couple of years. It was, it was a big wow. deal. But, uh, I mean, obviously someone dying, you know, in training is a big deal. But it is. But I mean, we, what, what can we expect? We, we can't expect, uh, you know, people to go and take out the number one terrorist in the world, Osama bin Laden, by not being able to meet the minimum standard, which is extremely high uh, in the teams at the basic yeah. level of buds. Like, you're going into war where you're po possibly going to die. In training, it could be so the same thing. You're, nothing is easy. Right. And nothing is guaranteed, not even your life in training. Yeah, and I, I think it just sucks, like, all the visibility on it nowadays. You know, like, 
it's kind of like a constant battle where you got all these instructors and then the, the command that's running buds and they're supposed to try and hold the standard of keeping it, you know, hard, you know, like the hardest it could be yeah. safely. And then you got people above them, you know, coming from whoever, who knows where, you know, Congress and all everyone above. And they're like trying to make it easier basically. So it's like, no, we want to, you know, <laughs> make it safe, but we can't lower the standards. So it's like, it's just a constant battle that's just been ongoing for a long time. I think it's just getting harder and harder to kind of find that balance of like, you know, what's too hard and, and what's not. And like to not lower the standard, because then that just, you know, that that goes against everything we do. You know, it's like, can you give, the reason we are um, sealed is because can you, can you give ahead. anything uh, like standards wise? I know from my time in the, the army and in like the regular army, the standards were already going out of the window in fucking 2016. Uh, and, and it was bad. Mm. And now it's worked its way up to the soft component. You know, for those of you who don't know, the special operations forces component. So uh, Navy SEALs and special forces and so on and so forth. Um, can you give any insight as to something as an instructor, if you're allowed to say? Because I know that's very uh, privileged wow. material to be aware of, but a standard that was lowered while you were in and you were like, fuck, like, from my time being a SEAL, that was something very important and crucial that kept myself and others alive and on our toes. And now we're not teaching it to the basics of people at BUDS. Uh, to be honest, I think it's, you know, it's been such a battle and it's just harder for instructors. But I think the standards have, have maintained as, oh, as much okay. as we could. Yeah, they've, they've kind of like times for run swims and of course have, have not changed, you know, stuff like that. That's great. And uh yeah, so that none of those have gotten lower. It's just kind of like the whole PC culture is getting into there, where Politics. it's like you know things you can say and stuff like that, and it's like I think it's stupid. You know, it's stupid. Like it's if you're worried about these kids' feelings right now, then I mean we're supposed to be training them for the worst possible scenario they could ever encounter later on. Yeah, later on and in life. If you're worried about their feelings now, then like, what are you talking about? It just, it's just ridiculous. It has no purpose in the military. And that's why I've tried telling people before. Mm -hmm. Like, literally your feelings do not matter in the military. They do not belong there. And there's a certain form of politics in the military that do not belong either. They need to disappear because those politics will get yeah. people killed. You will die. 100%. And I'm all about, you know, being respectful and, and listening to everyone in a, you know, a civilian office space, you know, because I'm, I'm a civilian now. And like, I'm all about that. I have nothing against that at all. But like, we're talking about buds here. <laughs> like, yeah. Are, are people are people confused? Like what we're trying to do here? Like, we're supposed to make this the hardest thing they could ever go through so that they're more prepared in the future when they're actually at downrange fighting in gunfights, you know, possibly shot pulling the friend that shot and we're worried about their feelings that are saying something wrong to them like no what are you, you talking it's just it's just your ridiculous. feelings are going to be broken and torn right off the bat when you go on your first deployment and realize you don't get to call mommy and daddy every day you don't get to talk to your friends <laughs> yeah. anymore you don't get to talk to your wife or yeah. your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your husband anymore they're gone okay uh -huh. And yeah. even the simple fact of us allowing like these dudes in basic, far below buds, to even have their cell phones and shit like that is crazy to me. Um, and oh man, th this emotional shit has got to go. Got to go. It's got to go. There's a time and place for shit like that. Yeah, I'm all for it in college and in jobs and stuff like that. You know, whatever. Everyone needs their mental health, but yeah. this is like a test, like a mental test, and yeah. we're not gonna make it easier because there's just no. Why would you like, why would you want to is, is my question. Why, why do they want to make it nicer or easier for them? Yeah. War is hell. And I think we need to make it as close of a simulation as possible. Uh, when going through, you know, yeah. something like buds, um, there's a level of exactly. suffering you need to endure and you need to actually be okay with it because it's going to be much, much worse when you deploy and, uh, we yeah. may not be in the worst war of all time right now, obviously pulling out of Afghanistan and stuff, but SOF is still active. They're still doing things. People are still getting hurt. People are still dying. And it's not going to be easy on the mind. There's still going to be people with PTSD and so on and so forth. And this is just a stepping stone in that long process. And if you can't cut it here, you'll never make it down the road. And or you're just going to end up getting someone else killed. Exactly, yeah. And so, you know, everyone, you know, I, I always thought about it too, like, 
you know, making it through buds when it was the hardest thing I've ever done by far. Mm-hmm. And, you know, later on, like in Afghanistan, going through some ops that were like, damn, how are we going to make it out of this? And it's like, buds kind of teaches you, you can pretty much make it through anything as long as you just keep going. There's a way, you know? And if it makes, if they make it easier, that's only going to fuck them in the end, you know, make them not as mentally tough as they should be. No. Nope. And that, that's important uh, that you mentioned that too, that, you know, you're able to draw from your experiences at buds, that point in time in suffering, um, when you felt like, you know, there was a hopelessness and you're able to draw strength from that and realize, you know, I learned through that suffering that this suffering, it is worse, but it's the same situation. And if we just push and move those right. feet and maneuver as a team and don't feel sorry for ourselves, we put our feelings and emotions to the side, we can live and make it out alive. Yeah. And, w- and one of those moments was on an op, uh, and it was during the winter time in mm-hmm. Afghanistan. And it, if you don't know, it's, it snows quite a bit up there. Uh, yeah. And, for uh, those of you who don't know, it fucking snows in Afghanistan. Uh, I found out yeah, in 2016 <laughs> and it's fucking cold. It doesn't even have to be snowing. Afghanistan is fucking cold at night. Yeah. It was negative 14 degrees, 2 a.m. <laughs> and here I am walking through about nine feet of snow. Oh, I'm shit. the point man. So, so and it, it was we had to go like what two two or three clicks to get where we were going and mm-hmm. uh basically everything i had on was fucked like my radio was frozen my <laughs> night vision was frozen my, my gun was frozen i was useless at this point so i'm just up front basically packing down the snow for, every, for to everyone walk else through. to follow through and have a good old fucking yeah. time yeah i was telling uh my girlfriend at the time, later on, you know, after deployment, I was like, you, you know, when I mean, you think about this, your freezer is at like, what, two degrees? Two, I don't know. Maybe she had it like 10 or something. Yeah. And I was in negative 14 degrees for five hours. <laughs> in wet clothes, <laughs> yeah. moving, yeah, trying to solid. stay alive. Yeah. yeah, getting shot at later on that night and everything was fucked. So I was like, that, you know, that was one of the worst moments. But, you know, crazy. I... I knew there's there's a way out, you know, of everything. So you just don't give up. And that was nothing compared to experiences at Buds. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was a hundred times worse than the worst part of Buds. You, you know what I mean? Because with Buds, you're like, if you actually do have a problem or, like, something's wrong. You get help. You There's a medical guy right there, right yeah. next to you. Like, hey, check this out real quick. They check you out. It's no big deal. Um, but, you know, out there, it's like, you know, you, you got to wait till a helicopter comes to pick you up and you get back on base before anyone looks at you. Fucking so. cutthroat, my boy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Fucking cutthroat. What would you say, uh, I guess, to, you know, outside the whole topic about uh, this stupid fucking incident, um, not the, the, Jesus Christ, can't wait for people to take it out of con- context, not the individual dying, <laughs> not the, the person, you know, passing out, but the... The thing we're addressing of like, you know, hazing and like, you know, oh, is it too much or too this or or too that and da 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 da. By the way, you can quit at any point in time, people, uh, in case you're not aware. Oh, yeah. You can literally just be like, fuck oh, this and yeah, walk away. Sure. And nobody's chasing you. Correct me if I'm wrong as a bunch of for me, when I was a team leader and a squad leader, I'm not anybody who when we were trying out, we had people trying out for like sniper and reconnaissance platoons, um, and they would quit during tryouts. They're like, Nope, I'm done. I, bro, nobody is coming after you and being like, no, come on, man. You got to do this. You got to try it. It's good. Thank God you're gone. Because if you can't handle this, I definitely don't want you in the future when things are much harder than this. Goodbye. I hope you have a great day. Moving on. And you're fucking the past. Not a thought anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, those guys that quit, you know, good on them for trying. But it was like they quit. The instructors, you know, were like snapped out of instructor mode instantly. They're like, okay, hey, man. You're all good. We'll get you a nice, nice hotel room tonight. Get you some good food, and uh, you know, <laughs> solid effort. You know what I mean? Everything like, they've ever wanted, was... except being a seal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Yeah, we. Anytime I heard that bell, I was like, oh man, good, good for them. They tried, but yeah. You, see you, you, later. you know what else I thought was interesting is that this video, the people who brought this to uh, what, what was the news network that we just saw it on CBS? The people who brought this to CBS. They said it was people who tried to become SEALs. So basically, the people who didn't make it are the people who are complaining about it being too difficult or too hard. What's fucking new? Every single time, it's the people who can't make it or think they're being mistreated or the people who actually don't work hard enough who come across saying, you know, something went wrong. What do you think about that? Oh, man. It's just, 
it kind of blows <laughs> me away that they call it hazing because like like i said at the very it's, beginning, it's like, by the way it's not hazing we we're just using this word because it's part of the the video concept of how the news is covering yeah it, for those of you who have experienced hazing let us know down below in the comments the video y'all just saw of tear gas blowing in your face by the wind is nothing hazing is a fucking right. nightmare i'm not okay with hazing i'm <laughs> yeah. okay with this shit because it's just normal training and all fun and games yeah, it's part of the curriculum. Every class does it, and that's yep. just part of what you have to go through. Yeah, so that the fact that they called it that kind of pisses me off. But uh, what was the question you're asking about? Oh, yeah, the people who. Yeah, the people who. So, too what hard. Do, yeah, what do you think about the people who brought it to you know CBS's attention, uh, and the fact that it was only the people or apparently individuals who did not make it? I mean, it just sounds kind of typical. It's like they are. They're mad they didn't make it through. You know, if they made it through, they <laughs> wouldn't have done that. You no, know, no, so they like, wouldn't have mentioned it at all. Well, they would have been like, oh, it's not a big deal. Yeah, they would have been bragging about it. But now instead they didn't make it through, they want to like, you know, cast light on them and kind of fuck them over somehow. It's just kind of a, uh, what's the word? It's like a bullshit, passive-aggressive way of, you know, trying to haters, be angry bro. at something you couldn't do. Yeah, Them fucking haters. haters. For sure. That's all it comes down <laughs> to at the end of the day. Like, people just be hating on shit for no fucking reason. Uh, but whatever. Yeah. They're not SEALs. So uh, stay out of it. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Mind your man. own business. Yeah, fucking <laughs> seriously. God damn. Well, I mean, honestly, like, I, I know we could talk about this for 500 years. Um, but I guess for a sure. quick thing I know a lot of people uh, would love to know, and I guess this is, like, the most asked question every single time uh, when people come across SEALs. Um, but for the, the younger guys out there, the people who do desire to do something and are willing to try and put in all the effort and suffer... Uh, what would you say to those dudes who are 18, 17 years old and want to become SEALs and are going through the process of going to BUDS? What do they do to survive? Well, for me, I was pretty comfortable in the water already. I was I swam all the time growing up. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say first things first, make sure you're comfortable in the water, swim a lot. And on the opposite end, I was not a runner. So, oh. I had damn, and you're fast too. I remember, I remember you were the only other person who was like on my ass for running, uh, when we were doing yeah, testing yeah. and sprints for all that shit in EP. You're the only dude who was close <laughs> yeah. to me, bro. Nate wasn't even close to me. You're, I, I you're the there. only one within a minute of me. <laughs> yeah, you were the fastest for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, being comfortable in the water and and just run. You know, everything else, you know doing pull-ups and all that stuff you'll get that at uh i think they have what's it called they have like a pre-buds thing now which yeah is like i've heard of this three months long in chicago i think and um that pretty much trains you up physically so okay i mean i don't know it's either it's either like i told myself you have to like 100 percent be in it if there's like if you're like 99 percent in your mind then you're not gonna make it like so it's the mental in, commitment 100 percent Oh, 100 like, percent mental over the physical right now you know we started this pre buds i forget what it's actually called but um it's like three months long and so we were mm -hmm. like doing the numbers you know and we were like you know calculating the percentages if we had you know since we started this is it actually helping you know them get through buds and mm -hmm. basically it was the exact same amount of guys making through then before we even had that just we just noticed that they were just more in shape quitters. <laughs> Damn, more in shape quitters. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, it's all it's literally like ninety five, ninety nine percent mental, honestly. So you gotta be all in. And like they say, it's it's a lifestyle, it's a life commitment. It's not like just a job. You know, it's I was gone over three hundred days a year for about eight years straight at the SEAL team. So it's gotta be, you know, you gotta be full in on it. So Damn. Wow. You have to make that up in your head, you know, and if, if you don't want it, you know, if there's a little doubt in your head, then, you know, that doubt, they'll get that doubt out of you and you, you'll quit. That's rough, man, because people are lacking commitment nowadays. Goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Well, I appreciate you, man. And uh, that's some great insight. And it was great to hear it from somebody who's actually uh, been a SEAL instructor and then had his time in the teams. And I, I greatly appreciate it. For sure, man. Anytime. All right, man. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and uh, I'll talk to you later, man. All right, brother. Later. All right. Well, that's it for the first episode of uh, Brutally Honest. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Um, I think that episode, this episode is going to be, you know, a decent time. Uh, 
I honestly would love to have like 45 minutes to an hour long episodes and go way more in depth on topics uh, than even that. Um, and, Cause that was just a very like pinpointed topic about, you know, the seal teams and the hazing issue that was going on, but there's so much more to dive into the video. Um, but uh, like I said, first episode, just trying to give rid of some of the kinks. For all I know, this there's no fucking audio in this video. Jesus Christ, that would be terrible. Um, but uh, I love all you, and uh, thanks for stopping by. 